Next question is from Charles. He says, I've been hearing a lot about sunning your uh, junk, uh, sunning my balls. Is there any research supporting tanning naked or putting my testicles, my balls in the sun? Well, I think this is a fascinating question. I'm glad Charles asked this question. And there's actually some pretty interesting research from the 1930s on this question that I'm gonna show you guys. So the title of the article is The Influence of Ultraviolet Radiation Upon the Excretion of Male uh, Sex Hormones. It is from um, Boston State Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, and I believe it is 1939. And if you go to the uh, third or fourth page, you can see that they are looking at the androsterone, androsterone concentrations, the output, when they irradiate the chest and the back versus the genital region. Now, I had to look this up. I didn't learn about androsterone, androsterone in medical school. It's not included in most uh, pathways of steroid hormone synthesis, but it is a real androgen. It has about one seventh the androgenic activity of testosterone, and it's thought to possibly be a pheromone as well. So they were looking at androsterone, androsterone concentrations. And as you can see from this graphic, that five irradiations of the general region elevated androsterone significantly higher and for a significantly longer time than irradiations of the chest. That's pretty interesting. Maybe there's something to butthole, taint, genital sunning. Uh, they've done other experiments here, which looked at the same thing. Uh, six irradiations of the genital region for androsterone concentrations uh, versus irradiation to the chest. Now, it's important to note that irradiating the chest and back, basically getting a large amount of your skin surface area in the sun does appear to improve levels of androgens, testosterone, sex hormones in general. But this study, I wish we would repeat this, this study suggests that actually sunning your junk find a place where you're not going to get arrested uh, and don't get burned, could increase at least this acid androgen, andros androsterone, androsterone, could, ask, could increase this acid androgen, androsterone, significantly more than the chest and the back. That's interesting to me, especially because it's a pheromone, or maybe it's a putative pheromone. So is it possible that sunning your uh, genitals, especially for men, could make us more attractive to ladies? I don't know. Um, certainly something that piques all of our interest as men because we want to be attractive to our mates or to potential mates, and this is an interesting thing. So something there. Um, definitely, I think the takeaway would be, as I've said on my Instagram Reels, get real ultraviolet light. Don't just get a vitamin D pill. There are many benefits to vitamin D. We know this. I think that making vitamin D in your skin from ultraviolet light from the sun is better. You get more nitric oxide, you get nitric oxide in general, you get endorphins, both of those have positive effects in humans in training your circadian rhythm, and perhaps there are all of these hormonal benefits. In fact, we know there are hormonal benefits from ultraviolet light on the skin that you don't get from a vitamin D pill necessarily. And in studies looking at the gut flora, we've seen that ultraviolet light can help modulate the gut flora in apparently a positive way by increasing alpha diversity. So Lots of benefits to real ultraviolet light. The caveat question always comes up, but Paul, I live in a place where I can't get ultraviolet light for part of the year. So you shouldn't know wherever you live, what latitude, at what part of the year we, you will encounter a vitamin D winter, quote unquote. At what part of the year your body will no longer be able to make vitamin D in the skin or the precursors of vitamin D in the skin from the sun because the angle of the sun is too low. You can find that information very easily online. But I believe that anything basically above Phoenix, Arizona is going to have some degree of a vitamin D winter. When I did my residency at the University of Washington in Seattle, there was a long period of the year, probably from November to about early March or mid-March, where I was not making any vitamin D in my skin of any significant amount when it was exposed to UV light. Was that UV light still helpful for nitric oxide or endorphins? Possibly. Was it helping and train my circadian rhythms? Yes, but it wasn't making vitamin D in my skin. So understand that ultraviolet light will change in intensity throughout the year. What did I do? I did some research and I chose to get into a tanning bed. This always causes people to lose their mind. They think tanning beds cause cancer. Uh, I don't think that the light 
from a tanning bed causes cancer any more than the light from the sun. And if you've heard my take on this, I think most skin cancer is coming from a predisposition to damage in the skin due to excess seed oils. I'm not saying that you should go out and get burned or that someone couldn't theoretically develop skin cancer from getting burned a lot, even if they weren't eating excess seed oils. But I think that not getting burned by ultraviolet light, you can enjoy the benefits. And so when I would go to a tanning bed, my goal was to not get burned. If you go to a tanning bed, I do not believe there is any evidence to support the notion that a tanning bed will increase your risk of cancer more than being in the sunlight, which most of us accept as a very good thing, if you do not get burned. The problem for many people arises in the fact that a tanning bed is more intense than the sun. Very few people live or have ever traveled anywhere where they could be in the sun for eight minutes or even five minutes and get a huge sunburn. That would be the equator for most people who were very white. Cue the photos of Elon Musk on his recent yacht. Uh, I did a whole take on that, a React video on that, which I'll share on my YouTube channel. Not body shaming, just worried about Elon's uh, both whiteness and his visceral adipose tissue. So check out the YouTube channel for the my reaction to the Elon photos on his yacht. But perhaps if Elon, uh, in all of his paleness, went to the equator for five minutes, he could get burned. But the point is the tanning beds are much more intense than the sun. So if you go into a tanning bed, go up gradually, make the first couple of times you go to a tanning bed very minimal, very short uh, experiences, and try not to get burned. Then when you know what your body can handle, and as you develop a quote-unquote solar callus, you can do more time. I'm of Mediterranean descent. My last name is Saladino. It's obviously Italian. It's Sicilian for those of you that care. Uh, so I get tanned pretty quickly, as you can tell from this video. I now live at the seventh or eighth parallel. So I'm pretty close to the equator here and I get plenty of sunlight in my life. But I think that, yes, I would recommend that you go in a tanning bed during the vitamin D winter if you live in a place where you don't make vitamin D from ultraviolet light for that part of the year. And I think that I would welcome any evidence that anyone is aware of that a tanning bed is uniquely damaging relative to the sun um, when we control for intensity and we limit our time of use and do not get burned in that. I mean, ultraviolet wavelengths are ultraviolet wavelengths. Uh, you could try and mimic a sun or solar radiation in terms of UVA and UVB. If you try to look up how much sunlight is UVA versus UVB, you can try to mimic that. In terms of tanning beds, that may be something to think about, that some of the upper echelon tanning beds have very little UVB, as I recall, but just off the top of my head, I believe sunlight is three to 5% UVB. So when I went to tanning beds, I tried to get a little more UVB than the ultra high priced tanning beds because I was at least thinking intuitively, perhaps I want some UVB from the sun and I'm gonna get UVB in this tanning bed. Again, don't get burned, and I think you'll be fine with that.